Hello everyone, my name is Karan Masru. Welcome to this video. So in this video, we are going to look at the solution of the problem that is anti-diagonal traversal of a matrix. First of all, let us start by understanding the question. What does question say? Given n cross n square matrix, return an array of its anti-diagonals in the top left to the bottom rightmost order. In n element of anti-diagonal i, j, surrounding elements will be i plus 1, j minus 1 and i minus 1, j plus 1. Look at the examples for more clarity. Basically, what he is trying to say is that you need to traverse all the anti-diagonals from the top left uh, to the bottom right and print them in order. So, for example, let me share this example, okay. So, in this way, I get diagonals. So, in this way, it is anti-diagonal. So, this is the top left, this is the bottom right. So, first of all, 3 will come, then 2, 4 will come, okay. Then 3, 5, 7 will come, then 1, 8 will come and then 9 will come. So, it is 3, then 2, 4, then 3, 5, 7, this anti-diagonal, then 1, 8 and then ultimately 9, okay. So, basically, you have to print them in this order, okay. So, these are the list of uh, anti-diagonals and this is the way you need to print them. You don't need to read input or print anything. Complete the function anti-diagonal pattern that takes matrix as input parameter and returns a list of integers in order of the values visited in the anti-diagonal pattern. The expected time complexity is big of n cross n and expected auxiliary space is also big of n cross n and the constraints are given here. So now if we think about solving this problem, so basically let's say my n value is 4 and this is the 4 cross 4 matrix which I am given. So I need to traverse all the anti-diagonals of it from the top left to the bottom right. Now what are anti-diagonals? Just to repeat. So these are anti-diagonals. Okay, so this is 3, 6, this is 8, 1, 3, this is 9, 2, 1, 4 and so on. So I need to start from top left. So first of all, this is the first anti-diagonal. So it is 4. Then I have 3, 6. Then I have 8, 1, 3. Then I have 9, 2, 1, 4, 9, 2, 1, 4. Then I have 8, 9, 8. Then I have 6, 2 and at the end I have 2. So, this will be my output, okay. Now, how will we solve this? So, basically what I will do is I will traverse the first row and from every element I will keep coming left, uh, left diagonal down, okay. So, let's say if I am here, okay, let's say this is i, j. So, for from any index i, j, I will come where next year. Now, if I come here, it means the row number has increased because this is i -th row, this is i plus 1 -th row and the column number has decreased. This is jth column, this is j minus 1 -th column, okay. From here, I will go to i plus 2, j minus 2. From there, I will go to i plus 3, j minus 3 and so on, okay. So, first of all, from here, I will go like this. So, I will traverse the first row and from here, I will go like this. Then from here, I'll go like this. Then from here, I'll go like this. From here, I'll go like this. So, my this much part will be covered, okay? Now, what I'll do, I'll traverse the last column from here, okay? From the uh, second row. And again, the same thing. From here, I'll come here. Then from here, I'll come here. And from here, I'll come here, okay? Now, the starting elements, how will I get it? By traversing the first row and then the last column from the second element. The, those will be the first element of the anti-diagonals. And after I got the first element, I have to just do i plus 1 and j minus 1 until these two are in range. Means, until i plus 1 is less than n and j minus 1 is greater than 0, these are my valid conditions. I can go down, okay. Once this, this will be the last element where j minus 1 will be 0, uh, where uh, I will either reach the first column or the last row, okay. So, for the above part, I will reach the uh, first column first, okay. So, for example, here I will reach the, here I will have 4, here I will have 3, 6, now I will stop here. Why? Because I have reached the first column. Rows are there, but columns are not there. Similarly, here I will stop here because there are no more columns and similarly, here also I will stop here. So, uh, for this much part, my condition will be j minus 1 greater than 0. But for this part, for uh, this condition will be violated first, okay. So, from 8, I will go to 9 and then to 8. Now, there is one more column here, valid column, but there is no row, okay. So, for these elements, my condition would be i plus 1 is less than n, okay. So, this is what we will do. First, traverse these elements one by one and for each of the element, traverse the anti-diagonals by converting i to i plus 1 and j to j minus 1 until valid. Then, traverse the last column from second element onwards and do the same. 
and this is how I'll get the uh, all the anti diagonals. Now let's look at its actual code. So if I look at the actual code, so I have to return a vector answer in which I will store all the anti diagonals. Then I have taken n as the size of the matrix and some variables. First of all, I'll traverse the first row. So i equals to zero to n are denoting the uh, zero to n minus one are denoting the column numbers. Row number is always zero and column number is uh, k. Okay. So my starting element of a particular anti-diagonal uh, anti-diagonal is j comma k, where j is zero because I'm traversing the first row and k is the column number which is denoted by i. So I am taking i in k. Why? Because I cannot change i here because I am using it for outer for loop. While k is greater than zero. Why? Because here the column will go out first, right? So while k is greater than or equal to zero, answer dot pushback matrix of j comma k decrement the row number and decrement the column number. Then again, uh, now this is to traverse the last column from second element onwards. So column number will always be n minus one. And row number will be i, where i will start from 1 to n minus 1. And here I will check the condition while row number is valid, while j is less than n, answer dot pushback matrix j k and increment the row number and decrement the column number. And finally, I will return this answer vector. What would be the time complexity? See, I am traversing the whole matrix. So the time complexity will be n cross n. And what would be the auxiliary space? The auxiliary space will also be equal to big O of n cross n. Why? Because in answer vector, I am storing n square elements. Now let's submit this code. So let's submit it. So we have solved this question successfully. I hope you have understood the solution completely. Thank you.